I'm RMAC Commissioner Chris Graham. Our 15 member institutions continue to bring you free RMAC Network webcast. Our goal is to deliver quality video to promote the performances and achievements of our student athletes. The promotion, production, and delivery of these events requires funding. While regular season webcasting remains free, beginning this year, our league shall charge a nominal fee for viewers of our championships and tournaments. Please follow the information below, including Huddle and RMAC Network contacts should you need any assistance in the postseason. Thank you for supporting the RMAC Network. Welcome back inside the Gallagher Event Center. The men's game between UCCS and Vitazine, Black Hill State, ready to tip off here in just a couple of minutes. And Brian, Mount Lions coming off a heartbreaker yesterday. Really could use a win tonight. Absolutely. Nine lead changes last night. The score was tied 11 times, and it's all about resiliency tonight for Jeff Culver's squad. How do you bounce back from a first loss in conference play? And they'll be without Will Becker, as we heard at halftime of the women's game. So Jesse Iweezy will have a big hole to fill in the middle of the court for the Mount Lions as they look to beat a Black Hill State who has kind of owned them the last couple of years. Absolutely, and I think Jesse Iweezy, especially getting that starting spot, is going to be a big, big impact on how this game goes. Had a great night last night. We'll see if he can continue to do that. Black Hill State coming off of last night, uh, lost last night to Regis as well. So both these teams still looking for their first victory in our MAC play. As we get to the starting lineups for each squad, now this is a very different Black Hill State team than we've seen the last two years that have led the Yellow Jackets to the Final Four of the NCAA Tournament each of the last two seasons. Their starting lineup will be this, Kaylin Hearn, Hoku Fisher, Joel Speckman, Matt Ragdale, who's from just up the road in Monument, played his high school ball at Lewis Palmer, and Jackson Edmond for Black Hills State University. For UCCS, it'll be Xavier Martinez, Jesse Iweezy, Han Sar, Jezza McKenzie, and Max Stoddard, the first five on the floor for the Mountain Lions as UCCS comes into this game with a four and three overall record. Mountain Lions looking to bounce back in a big way here. Obviously we mentioned that two point loss last night. Mountain Lions have faced a lot of adversity. We mentioned the injury to Becker last night. And as we get things underway, this game is gonna tell us a lot about these two teams. Mountain Lions win the opening tip, and their first possession will run through Iwizu, who hands it off to McKenzie, and they work it around to Martinez, back to Jezza. Kick out, Iwizu for three. Oh, that's a good way to start. Jesse Iwizu with the triple. Iwizu had a three-point shot last night, couldn't quite convert. Not normally a three-point shooter, knocks that one down early. And Black Hills tried to respond, but missed their own three-pointer. Freshman Jackson Edmond getting some big minutes here. Missed that first shot. Not normally a ton of minutes. This mountain line's in a little bit of pressure with 10 on the shot clock. Martinez in the corner, goes baseline, kicks out. Uh-oh, Iweezy again. Ho, ho, ho! Jesse Iweezy two for two from beyond the arc. He's got all six points early on. What a confidence boost for the young man. Able to knock down two big three-point shots early in this one. That'll get your confidence up. You're right, Iweezy doesn't shoot a whole lot of three-pointers, but he's now four of seven on the season from beyond the arc. So. Obviously very capable, as we've seen, of knocking them down. The first one was in rhythm, second one a little bit late on the shot clock. And now they work it down to Iweezy, and there'll be a foul on the floor. So the Mountain Lions obviously 
like the mismatch of Jesse Iweezy down low. Forget them. I love this impact that Jesse Iweezy has started this game with. He's only started one game so far this year. Normally comes in as a replacement, but he's been fantastic early. And you can see why. So physical and athletic down low, and that's now two quick fouls on Speckman. Oh, nope, sorry. They gave that foul to Edmund. So... Two team fouls quickly here for Black Hills, and I Weezy will go to the free throw line. Five of eight last night from the free throw stripe. Left that one off the front rim. I Weezy got a big haul of minutes last night, 24 to be exact. We'll surely get a lot today. Free throw's good. And Iweezy up 7-0 over Black Hill State. See the Yellow Jackets trying to get it around to their main scorer, Matthew Ragsdale. That shot in the lane, no good. And Iweezy comes down with the rebound. Gets it up to Martinez. Hands it off to Saar, back to Jesse. See the respect there from Shanklin coming out on Iweezy now, making sure he doesn't shoot that three. And now Iweezy is open if they get it to him. They did, extra pass, Stoddard will put up the three, and the Mountain Lions on fire from beyond the arc to start this game. Three and three from downtown, and it's not the cards getting it done early here. It's the big men from UCCS. So Iweezy and Stoddard have hit three combined three-pointers to start things off, and the UCCS out to a quick 10-0 lead. Stoddard on the cut that time, their first bucket inside, and that forces Black Hills to call the timeout as the Mount Lions have been absolutely money through the first three minutes of this game. 12 to nothing run here in the first quarter, in the first half, excuse me. And Xavier Martinez getting in on the action, dishing that assist off to Max Stoddard. So I wheezy Stoddard, all 12 points for the Mountain Lions as they have a 12-0 lead. And that is a great start. Black Hill State 0 for their first four to start the game. Xavier Martinez dropped off that assist to Max Stoddard. He's up to three already. Able to assist Iweezy a couple of times as well. Xavier Martinez, the freshman guard, has been fantastic. 4.7 assists, leads the RMAC in assists per game. Already has three in just three minutes of play. Black Hills trying to figure out this mountain line defense here early on. Good switch, seven on the shot clock. Looking for a five second call, don't get it. Three on the shot clock, slip, and Iweezy comes away with the steal, but gave it right back. And now a couple of Yellow Jackets run into each other and they'll slow it down. Just a little hug between teammates. Ragsdale kick, three ball, and there's the first points for Black Hills. Comes out of the hand of Ron L. Tate. Junior forward shoots about 36%. Wonderful shot in rhythm. Martinez, great backdoor cut, and it was partially blocked. Ragsdale, the former Lewis Palmer Ranger, leaves that shot off the mark. Joseph McKenzie and Hannes Saar both getting a little bit of duties guarding Ragsdale. Stoddard off the mark, and that's the first missed three of the game for UCCS. And it's thrown away and a turnover on the jacket. That brings us to the first media timeout. A quick four minutes. Mount Lions hit a couple of threes, and they currently have a big nine-point lead.
Back inside Galaglee Event Center. Mount Lions up 12-3. And off to a very, very quick start is UCCS, four of six to start things. And Iweezy picks up a foul. <laughs> Noah Baca checks in for UCCS as well as Kyle Cabs as they get the ball into Iweezy. From inside the arc, this time off the mark. Noah Baca filled up the stat sheet last night, had to play a lot of minutes as Xavier Martinez was out later in the game with fouls. Didn't foul out, but had four, and Noah Baca nine points, a couple of rebounds, a couple of steals. Another kickback and another three from straight away, and that's two of them for Tate from straight away. He's got all six Yellow Jacket points. Iweezy down low on the block, and they're going to get Jesse with a travel. So the Mount Lions game plan, obviously they want to get Jesse Iweezy the ball early and often. Absolutely, and I think the impact of that is this Black Hills State team is kind of sinking down trying not to let him move around in the post. They've been successful the last few trips down the court. Ragsdale, the on-court general, kind of calling out the play. Kick into the corner, three ball, no good. Weak side rebound, handed right back, another miss, and Iweezy with another rebound. Two rebounds, an assist, a block, seven points for the junior. Oh, Martinez never put the ball down, I didn't think, after he made that move, but they're going to call him for a carry. Xavier Martinez, the leading scorer for the UCCS squad, a freshman out of San Antonio, Texas, pours in about 15 points a game, good enough for 16th best in the conference. Ragsdale in the post, no good. Oh, and Cavs might have rolled his ankle. Nope, he's doing okay. Kind of took a little bit of an awkward kind of jolt there. And now Baca into the lane, kick out. They work it around to Saar. Hands it off to Martinez for three short. Senior Rashawn Barron getting some minutes here in place of Jesse Iweezy. Good cut there, and easy finish for John Shanklin. So it was a 12-0 Mountain Lion lead has been cut to 12-8. UCCS scoreless for the last three minutes after that very fast start. And they're going to get a foul called there on Rashawn Barron, who just checked in. Barron doesn't play a whole lot of minutes, averages about seven a game, pours in about seven points to go with it. Senior forward out of Philly getting an early foul call there. Let's claim Philly is his hometown, but he actually played his high school basketball just down the road at Fountain Fort Carson, so must have military parents would be my guess to play at Fountain Fort Carson. That's usually how it works. And Barron's there, couldn't alter the shot enough though. Once again, the freshman Edmund there to get onto the score sheet. Great roll off of that pick. That's now a 10-0 run for Black Hill State over the last four minutes. They get it down low to Barron in the block. Working on Shanklin, goes up hard, and one for Rashawn Barron. Big time move from the veteran, able to turn, body up, 
just go right over the top of John Shanklin. Yeah, Barron's only played 14 minutes all season. Getting some early action here in this one and has a couple of early points. It's free throw left short. Ragsdale and Shanklin again, a two-man game, but then Shanklin threw it out of bounds. Ragsdale, a little bit of a slow start. Certainly a player who can turn it up. As I mentioned, 18 and a half points a game. Already has a hat trick of assists. A couple of rebounds, but certainly someone that Jeff Culver has circled on the game plan. Team best, 41.7% from behind the arc. Gets the triple to fall as we have about an 11 and a half time on the clock. Good job by Hannes Saar there as he got in the passing lane. It goes out of bounds and it'll stay with Black Hill State, but that brings us to the under 12 media timeout. Mount Lions on a 5-0 run as they currently lead 17-10. to 10 is the lead for UCCS. And they finally got some help for Iweezy and Stoddard and in some unlikely places as Jadon and Barron have scored points. Those guys don't see a whole lot of minutes, but they've made an impact here early on. Ragsdale baseline kicks it out. One more touch into the corner. Fisher going baseline, cut off, and he's called for a travel. Jezza McKenzie was right in front of him. That was the old triple jab step. Oku Fisher tried to get McKenzie up in the air. Couldn't quite do so. Well done by McKenzie. Saar looking for some help. Finds Jadon who gets it over to McKenzie. Jezza crossover called for a travel himself. Martinez back in, James Ellis checking in for the first time for UCCS as Jadon and Baca take a seat. Ellis started off his collegiate career last night, nine minutes, five points, and an assist to his name. A good start for the young man. And a uh, travel call there on Hearn as he went up didn't get the shot off, tried to dribble it, and the officials were like, nope, can't do that. Thought he kind of maybe bumped it with his own knee, bumped it to himself. It looked like maybe someone hit the ball, but UCCS bench had it covered. <laughs> 
tough shot there from Hannes Saar and hit it off the back rim as Ragsdale now the crossover. Ragsdale started his career at Western Colorado, so he's worked his way around the Armac as that foul will go against McKenzie and will send Fisher to the line. First couple of free throws for Black Hills State. Haven't drawn a whole lot of fouls. Very early in this one as Iweezy and Cavs check back in. That's the first point for Black Hills in nearly three minutes of play. As Fisher goes two of two. Second leading scorer for Black Hills State has his first two points of the game. Xavier, tough shot there from the freshman. Wonderful patience there from Martinez, just holding off on the screen, leading his defender away. Ragsdale from the corner, he's got it. First three points of the game for Matthew Ragsdale. Shoots a 34% clip from beyond the arc, does Ragsdale. Certainly a guy who can turn it up. Saar contested there with two yellow jackets in his face. That three is off the mark, battling down low, and they're going to get a foul, I believe, on Jesse Iweezy. That's exactly who it goes on as he was fighting Speckman for that rebound. Ronnell Tape attempted his third three there. Great form from the junior forward. Can't quite get it to fall. And this Mountain Lions will play some more defense. Ragsdale coming off a couple of screens. No good. Rebound punched out to Martinez. Xavier, quick over to Cavs, the lefty, and now they're going to reciprocate, and they're going to get Speckman with the foul down low, guarding Iweezy. That's two fouls now on Speckman. Five team fouls on the Yellow Jackets. Shanklin and Speckman sharing the duties with Iweezy, who pops out to the three-point line. Cavs takes the handoff, gets it over to Stoddard. Mack looking for some help. He'll hand it off to Xavier. Martinez. Oh, tried to get it back to Mack, who lost it, but it goes to the hands of Jesse. Kyle, down low in the post, turn around. Righty hook, no good. And a foul down low, I believe, on Black Hills see the number they call out, but I believe it's on tape. It is indeed. So that's now 16 fouls on Black Hills. Mountain Lions looking to shoot some free throws soon. Mountain Lions do a great job as you can see Stoddard just pushed in the back there by tape, draws the foul. Mountain Lions do a great job of drawing fouls as they get one there. Stoddard fighting hard for the rebound. That's two on tape as well, so he'll take a seat. Oh, and Martinez created some space, and they're going to get a foul. No goaltending? Yeah, there we go. The other official comes in and calls it good, so goaltending is the call, and he should get a free throw. The officials are going to talk about it, so they sent both teams back to their benches. Certainly looked like ball was coming down already and Martinez got bumped out of bounds. Let's see if there's a replay as you can see officials are taking a look at it here but wonderfully done from Martinez just kind of found a soft spot in the defense. Take a look at it again here's Xavier got around that defender I mean he took it off the glass so whether it's coming down or not I'm pretty sure it should be goaltending regardless and a pretty quick decision from one of the officials so the third will come in 
have his quick little look. And I imagine they're going to count this bucket, and it'll be one free throw for Xavier Martinez. Looked like Williams swiped over the top of Martinez, maybe got a little bit of his head as well. Not quite sure. Yep, and they will count the basket. So one free throw for Xavier Martinez. And he hits nothing but nylon. You can see the wisdom from Martinez on that last play, just kind of holding off the defense, finding a soft spot in the zone, or in the defense, excuse me. Nice shot off the dribble there from Hearn. Iweezy and Cavs almost ran into each other. And Kyle limping a little bit as he goes to the far corner. Ellis, jump stop, floater, too strong. Tough bucket to get there. Trying to get it over the top of Ragsdale, who's a great defender as well. Kick out wide open, three ball, good from Edmund. It's the first three-pointer for the freshman forward. Lefty knocks down a big triple, cut the lead to two. Iweezy tried to quick touch pass into Cavs, but it's stolen away. And now Black Hills with an opportunity to tie it. They lose that out of bounds, but they'll actually say it stays with the Yellow Jackets. Brings us to the under eight. Mount Lions clinging on to a two-point lead. So UCCS holding on to a two-point lead. Their largest lead was 12 points. They were up 12-nothing, and off the inbound, Black Hill State ties it right up. Both teams have shot the ball really well, finished well at the rim. This is what you love to see on the second day of RMAC play. And Iweezy is going to get called for a charge. Shanklin fired up by the play. I thought maybe he was a little bit to the side of Iweezy. You can see Jeff Culver talking it over there. Either way, Iweezy will grab his second foul. Ragsdale off the back screen, and he's going to call for a travel. So UCCS has done a good job on Matthew Ragsdale here early on, just three points for the Yellow Jackets' leading scorer. Ragsdale, of course, high school teammates of Mount Lion Noah Baca, Lewis Palmer, also teammates of Joel Scott, the two-time RMAC Player of the Year, who's now 
tearing it up at Colorado State. There's Baca who lost the dribble. It ends up in the hands of Stoddard though. Xavier thought Mac was leak into his left and that was not the case. Jesse Iweezy will find a spot on the bench. Kyle Cabs back in. As Max Stoddard will be the center once again. Stoddard, good defense. And it went off the official. And they're going to say it stays with Black Hills. Great shot fake there from Edmund, who knocked down the triple earlier. This got Cabs up into the air, couldn't quite finish. Online defense coming to the aid. Shakelin gives Black Hills their first lead of the game. Great layoff from Ragsdale, who's up to four assists on the evening. Dishing it for the emphatic slam. Uh, Martinez had the ball stripped out of his hands. I'm not sure how that official, who was blocked by several players, makes the call. This is the last inbounds pass. Shanklin unmatched there in the middle. I was surprised that there wasn't a deflection called. I think the two officials who had a good view maybe saw it, but. And they didn't blow their whistle, so I'm not sure why that one on the far side, it was blocked by half a dozen players, did. Right. And a fade away from Ragsdale, and Black Hills is starting to heat up, and that'll force Jeff Culver to call a timeout. UCCS. And now Culver is talking to the officials as he gets a 30 second timeout called and this is the opposite of the women's game we just saw black hills got out to a quick start mountain lions had to come back this time it was uccs who got the quick start and now black hills has retaken the lead absolutely black hill state has had some great shots some great assists all coming through matthew ragstail who has a couple of points to his name as well but some of the younger players for the team in yellow starting off this game in a positive way. This is the largest lead of the contest for Black Hills at four points. Stoddard, quick three. Oh, and Mac is feeling it. And if Mac continually hits from the outside, that is a good sign for UCCS. Offense flows so well when players are making shots. That's kind of a given, but just draws players out and opens up those driving lanes for the explosive Mountain Lion guards. Martinez is going to get called for a foul. Deegan Williams getting subbed out now, but a nice move there, kind of keeping Martinez at bay, drawing the foul from the freshman. Oh, and Shakelin was wide open again on that inbounds, and they missed him. Ragsdale took a couple of screens and then a three-pointer, and he was off the mark. So UCCS has with an opportunity to retake the lead if they can score here. Martinez, the floater. And then slow back on defense, but Saar able to come down with the rebound. Hannes Saar had a big game last night, had a number of buckets in big moments for the Mountain Lions. Has yet to get off the scoring mark tonight as that one sneaks out of bounds. Jeff 
Culver is really working one of these officials down here. He has not been happy here in the first half. Now he comes back and starts yapping at the second official, and his team leaves a player wide open who luckily missed the three. Mountain Lions have the advantage in the fouls, but a couple of key turnovers called by the officials that Culver has taken exception to. Stoddard into the lane. Euro step through, missed it. Mar or Cavs, good job to get the offensive rebound, goes back up. Left it short, and Shanklin will clear it for Black Hills. Mount Lions, the best rebounding team in the RMAC compared to the 12th best from Black Hills State. That number is going to be hard to duplicate with Will Becker out, though, your leading rebounder, who unfortunately may miss some extended time. So it'll have to be a rebound by committee kind of approach for UCCS. Absolutely. Mountain Lions have players who can do it. I see how easy a, a big reason for that as well. Jezza off the back rim. Ragsdale got uh, called for a travel. And the final media timeout of the half has arrived. 2.40 to go. Black Hill State holding on to a one-point lead. After the final media timeout, 2.30 to go now in the first half. Black Hill State with a one-point lead. Jadon, who just checked in, gets all the way to the rim, can't finish. Oh, maybe tape got him on the arm there. Either way, missed the bucket. Three from the corner, no good. And they're going to get a foul down low on Speckman. And it should be free throws for UCCS. About three minutes of no score basketball, at least on the field goal end. Last bucket came at the 536, excuse me, 514 mark. Max Stoddard hit that three, so. And a lane violation on Black Hills. One and one for Barron, <clears throat> and uh, he certainly took his sweet time putting that free throw up and got Black Hills to fall into the lane early. Second one short as well. went up to try and block it, but it was a better move there from Tate. Tape up to eight points, two of three, excuse me, three of four from the field now. They get it down to Barron, working on Shanklin. 
somehow held on to the ball but can't get the shot to fall. A couple of taps on the arm there and goes unnoticed. Barron unable to finish. Tape again, left it short. just couldn't finish the shot and not sure who they're going to call the foul on it's going to be on UCCS and I think it's going to be on Barron yes Jeff, it is Jeff Culver with his hands up it sure looked to me like look jumped straight up at Barron but apparently referees saw something we couldn't one minute to go here in the first half Mountain line still scoreless in the last four minutes here. Oh, Shanklin. Good defense there for Mac. I don't think he actually got a piece of the ball, but made Shanklin shorten his attempt just enough. Good thing as well. Shanklin looked poised to make a poster right there. Barron using that big body to get around to the other side of the basket. And Barron will have a couple more free throws. Kyle Cabs will check in for Hanasar to play a little bit of defense here. As Barron will attempt some free throws. Barron 0 for 2 now from the free throw line. Cabs in for Stoddard defensively. And too hard on that one. So Barron has done a good job to get to the free throw line, just hasn't been able to convert once he's stood there. About a second or so difference between game clock and shot clock, so Black Hills is going to run off as much time as humanly possible before throwing up a last second shot. Ragsdale and a shot clock violation. Great defense from the Mountain Lions as you knew Black Hills was going to take their sweet time and they, at that time they took a little bit too much. Mountain Lions certainly a chance to get a bucket here if they can find someone open a second. Maybe throw it into the front court here. Saar caught it at half court, lays it off. Oh, oh, oh. Got it off the backboard, but unable to find the net. So after 20 minutes of play, Black Hill State, who found themselves down 12 nothing to start the game, is up by three at 28 to 25 over UCCS. We take a look through some of the individual stats. Mag Stoddard leading the way for the Mountain Lions as we'll look at some of the replays here. Eight points, three of five from the field, knocked down two threes. On the other side, it's been Ron L. Tape. Eight points, three of five from the field. Jesse Iweezy got things started. He had the first seven points of the game for UCCS as they did build that lead, but unable to hold it as we hit halftime. All right, we're going to take a break. When we come back, we'll have an interview with head UCCS women's basketball coach Misty Wilson as her team coming off a big win right before this one against this same Yellow Jacket squad. We'll be back in just a couple of minutes.
inside the Gallagher Event Center. Halftime of the men's game, Black Hill State with a three-point lead over UCCS. I'm now joined by head women's coach here at UCCS, Misty Wilson. And Misty, first off, congratulations on maybe a little tighter of a game than you would have liked yes. at the end, but a victory nonetheless. Yes, and we'll take it. I mean, when you get to conference play and you're playing a team as good as Black Hill State, you'll take a victory any way you can get it. Your team built a big lead. We're up 16 at one point. What was working for you guys during that stretch? I, I think we were moving the ball, you know, looking for the right opportunities to attack, and we were collapsing the paint and then getting it to the right player on the perimeter and knocking down shots. And, um, of course, we always have the option to get it inside to Mason, but we know a lot of teams are going to try to take that away. Um, and I thought we picked our moments to get it inside to her and, and, and mixed it up, getting it in and, and hitting shots from the perimeter, and balance helps. A little bit of a weird scenario. Black Hills, a couple of former UCCS players, um, you know, obviously know the girls on UCCS's team well. Was that something you guys talked about at all, or did you just kind of prepare for the team on the other side? Yeah, you just have to prepare for the team on the other side. And, uh, you know, the players, uh, they know how to navigate those relationships, and, you know, they have history, and, and that's fine. But um, for us, it was just preparation, you know, as usual. And both of the players that – I didn't I didn't know Ellie, but, you know, Gracie uh, met her once. But, um, you know, both of them are really good players and impact players for them. So we knew we had to prepare – and and do a good job against both of those players. Coming up on Tuesday, a game against Division One Air Force uh, up at their place, just right up the road, get a little bit of running in. What are you going to take away from that? Because officially an exhibition game for you guys. Right. No, I think it's a good time to get some experience for some players that might not be getting um, experience right now because you never know when it's going to be their opportunity to step in and play. And so I think, you know, with the timing of this, it's not idea, but, you know, just getting some experience and some game experience for some of these players. And then on the road, first road trip in the RMAC, heading out to Colorado Mesa and Westminster. Long trip for you. Yes. A um, couple of good squads out there as well. Um, what do you take away totally from this weekend that you hopefully ingrain fully into your girls for next? Well, how hard it is to win, you know, and, and that's what our players, we've, we've talked about it. Um, it's not easy, and the more you do it, the harder it gets. And so um, just them being able to navigate, um, you know, the, the momentum that we've been able to put together, you know, be able to navigate that in a hostile environment on the road. Ladies on the road at Air Force on Tuesday and then at CMU and Westminster Friday and Saturday. Their next home games, not till after the New Year, so you have to wait a little bit. UCCS head women's coach Misty Wilson, big, big win today. Uh, the men looking for a victory as well. They're down by three at halftime. We'll be back with more of their game in just a minute. The mountain lion is one of the strongest members of the feline family. The average mountain lion lives five times a day and consumes up to three times its weight in protein. It shares many characteristics with its domestic counterparts, the good and the bad. UCCS, find your inner mountain lion. I really remember that because I was really excited and I was really scared and it was really hard you know saying goodbye to my family and um, I think that was really scary for me you know never leaving the state being first generation and stuff I didn't really know what to expect from my college experience. The first thing that comes to mind when I think about what surprised me about living on campus is how open everyone was in the first couple weeks to get to know other people. Me and a couple other people I had met started playing volleyball in just an open field and then within 20 minutes there were about 30 people in the circle all just hitting a volleyball around and it's something that just showed me how open people were to meeting new people. I had never had the opportunity, you know, to ever share a room growing up and stuff. And so it just so happened that like me and my roommate like got along very, very well and um, as well as our other suite mates. So I'm a resident assistant in Summit Village and that is essentially a student upperclassman who lives on the floor with the new year freshmen, sometimes upperclassmen, who kind of just guide them through their first year on campus. There are tons of different rooming options here on campus. The first one that we see most commonly is known as Summit Village, and we have privates in a suite, we have private bedrooms, private bathrooms, we have a double in a suite, um, we have triples in a suite, so there's tons of different options. 
definitely when you are coming into college, there's so many different personality types, and so it's really important to find an area within housing that is best for you. Um, so I personally really love having a private bedroom, private bathroom, but then I have some friends who really enjoy being able to have a more social aspect, and so they have a double bedroom with a living room. Different floors have different themes. Let's say you really are enjoying leadership. Well, we have a leadership floor. Let's say you're a criminal justice major or a nursing major. We also have floors for that. Education, once again, my favorite floor because I'm an education major. There's even um, non-education based ones such as Colorado Living and they do a lot of things filter around the community, like going out to Garden of the Gods and just getting experience about what does it mean to live in Colorado Springs. For me, when I'm not in class or not studying in the library, I'm usually hanging out with friends in their rooms, watching TV, uh, playing video games, different stuff like that, or we're going off campus, either hiking in the bluffs behind the school or exploring Colorado Springs. We have two dining halls that we're available to us to eat at, and when we go there, they have so many different varieties of food, and you really can just taper it to your diet. So I have residents who are vegan, and they have no trouble finding food on campus. I have people with gluten allergies or who are uh, lactose intolerant, and they have the availability to go to the dining hall and eat whatever they want because they are accommodated there. But then there's people like me who literally want cookies every single meal and can get them, um, along with french fries and pizza and pasta. So there's just always different options every time of the day. In the dining halls, there's different sections that are in each of them, both at the lodge and over at the Roaring Fork. And no matter what you're feeling, depending on any time of day, there's gonna be options there. I think a lot of people think on campus living, you know, is supposed to be super studious, super, you know, serious, but I think it can be a lot of fun when you make it that way. I've met some of my closest friends uh, from just living on the same floor. The one thing about living on campus is that chances of like you getting involved in something tend to be spontaneous. They're not always structured. So you meet people that you normally wouldn't talk to or you normally wouldn't have classes with and you'll have that opportunity just to study together, go out to eat together. So it's just kind of limitless. I wanted more than a degree. So with innovative courses and affordable tuition, UCCS fuels success. Apply today at uccs.edu. Picking the right college is key. And with one-on-one -on -one attention and hands-on experience, UCCS fuels success. I wanted more than a degree. So with innovative courses and affordable tuition, UCCS fuels success. Apply today at uccs.edu. The mountain lion can travel up to 370 miles. Located primarily in North America, these majestic creatures can traverse a large variety of terrain. There are, of course, some natural barriers. UCCS, find your inner mountain lion.
time here inside the Gallagher Event Center. The UCCS men are going to have to make a small comeback if they want to earn a victory here over Black Hill State. Is take a look at some of the individual leaders. Tape leading the way for Black Hills with eight points, while Shanklin has chipped in six, four of them on pretty monstrous dunks. While UCCS led by the eight of Max Stoddard and seven of Jesse Iweezy. Iweezy had all seven of those in the first like 52 seconds, I feel like, of this game. And he's been a little quiet ever since. Yeah, the Mount Lions shooting from three also gone a little bit cold there at the end of the half. They still are shooting a very, very solid 55% from beyond the arc, but slowed down certainly as we closed out the first half of play. Black Hills with the first possession here in half number two as Ragsdale's got it in the corner. Edmund working on McKenzie. Three on the shot clock, turnaround hook, scraped the rim, but fell right into the hands of Stoddard. Have to imagine at the break, head coach for the visitors, Ryan Thompson, seventh season head coach, wanted to get Ragsdale more involved. He's been a facilitator today. A couple of points for the young man as well. Iweezy from the corner looking to start off hot here in the second half. Missed that one. And Black Hills responds on the other end. Fisher with a triple. Fisher shoots well from the three-point line. Martinez left, unfortunately, to cover Edmund, who has knocked down a three today. And Black Hills State able to make the Mount Lions pay. Iweezy now in the block. Jesse Iweezy going glass. Has his first two points since very early in this ballgame. Wonderful work to get down as far as he can in the post, force his defender to kind of try and reach around. Iweezy just too deep into the post there. And that ended a nearly six minute scoreless drought for UCCS, that bucket from Jesse Iweezy. Anasar getting the defensive duties of covering Ragsdale here early in this one. Fade away three and way off the mark and Stoddard another rebound. That's his eighth on the evening for the big man. Martinez takes it all the way and couldn't get it over Shanklin. The 6'9 Shanklin was able to alter that shot and then Stoddard able to do the same on the other end. Mount Lions working hard defensively here. Well done from the big number 24 to put that shot away. Martinez, beautiful move off the glass for the deuce. Xavier Martinez drops in two more. He's got seven. See the high IQ of the freshman guard there. Does so well to get players on his hip. No good there, and I wheezy skies for the rebound. Uh, McKenzie has it stripped, and Black Hills is heading the other direction. Quickly up to Fisher. Step through around Stoddard, finishes with the left hand. Euro step to get the hips turned of Stoddard. A beautiful move there. Xavier the kick back to Mack off the back rim. Quick release there from the big man. Knocked down a pair of triples in the first half. Shanklin, and that is totally his game. Quick cut for the layup. The lead has ballooned to six points and a timeout called by UCCS head coach Jeff Culver. First coach is called timeout, turns into a full. So we will take a break. We'll come back in just a minute.
UCCS has the ball out of the timeout as they trail by six. This is their largest deficit of the game. Surprised to see Stoddard turn down a three, two or three from beyond the arc. Martinez found Mack who slipped and they're gonna get a foul on Ragsdale. That's exactly who they're gonna call it on. So for Matthew, just his first foul and that brings us to the official under 16 media timeout. So we'll take another break again. We'll come back with more UCCS basketball in just a minute. CCS is going to have to figure some stuff out here as they are one for their last five from beyond the arc and trail by six points as Xavier will set up the offense. Certainly, uh, certainly not in a bad spot here. Mountain Lions haven't played their best basketball by any means. Oh, and Martinez knocks down the J and he'll get a free throw. Well, after last night, Halftime score between the two teams, 41-40. This game's certainly a slower pace between the two teams. A few more fouls early in this one, a few more missed shots, but Mount Lions certainly not in a bad spot after not their best start. And Martinez is in double figures. He's the first Mount Lion to hit that mark as he knocks down that free throw. First person on the court as well as no double digit scores for the visitors. Kick out, three ball, no good. Haness comes down with the rebound. Xavier, quick feed to Iweezy and a jump ball is gonna be called. It'll ball stay with UCCS. I'm a big fan of that pick and roll between Xavier Martinez and Jesse Iweezy just to get Iweezy kind of off the block, moving forward. Such a dynamic player, try and get him downhill. Martinez lightning quick into the front court. McKenzie behind the back dribble. Jezza, great individual move, and he'll be rewarded with some free throws. on Ragsdale, his second. Mount Lions with no fouls here in the second half as of yet, of course. When I say that, next play will likely be a Mount Lion foul. Either way, McKenzie knocks down the first. And Jezza matches his season average free throws going one of two. Good long rebound though from Stoddard as Mount Lions work it back inside to Iweezy and he's gonna call for a travel. Should have put the ball on the ground. He had a dribble space, but he dragged his toe just enough. Thought maybe for a second he'd get away with it, just leaving the toe a little bit too far away from the body. And the referees see it as well. And oh, Mount Lions has switched to the two, three zone. Tried to get it down low, it's punched out. 
Not sure where the deflection came from the mountain lines. Thought it just went straight out. Either way, it'll be yellow jacket ball. Ragsdale got into the lane, kicked it out, an extra pass. And now a few more dribbles, nice speed down low. Mack was there, but it wasn't enough as the finish comes from Speckman. Speckman gets his first two points of the game. He's been out there for only a handful of minutes. Stoddard will get three free throws. Now sophomore Williams just couldn't quite hold up there as Stoddard attempts his fifth three-pointer of the game and will go to the line for his efforts. 27 of UCCS's 33 points have come out of the hands of Martinez, Iweezy, and Stoddard as Mack hits the first one. Would love to see some more scoring from a couple of the other guys from the Mountain Lions as that one rims in and out. Matt goes two of three, and now 29 of the 35 points have come from those three players as Mac becomes the second Mountain Lion in double figures with 10. Big fan of Jeff Culver's idea to go to a zone here. Yellow Jackets, not a great passing team. Caused a little bit of chaos here. That was a pretty good feed down low. Cavs came flying in and got the foul as Speckman now will head to the free throw line. Yeah, Black Hill State, the ninth best sh three point shooting team in the RMAC here in the early part of the season. And that's usually where zones can break down is give you some threes. And if a team doesn't hit a whole lot of them, not a bad philosophy from Jeff Culver. Both teams shooting over 38%. Mount Lions, the better mark at 45. And both free throws are missing. I wheezy skies for the rebound. Mackenzie missed an easy layup off a great feed from Iweezy. This left it a little bit short as the home team continues with the zone look. Ragsdale off the front rim, run down by Martinez. Sometimes those open threes are the hardest ones to make. Just staring it down, feel like you gotta. And a great move for my Wheezy down low. Drops in two more. He's now got a game high 11. Oh, and McKenzie comes up with a steal. Way to make up for that missed layup on the other end. Gets another possession for the Mountain Lions. Looking for some help now as he picked up his dribble. Stoddard down low, double teamed. Iweezy's open, got it to him. Three ball, money. Jesse Iweezy with another triple in the game high 14. And that forces Black Hill State to call a timeout as the Mountain Lions have retaken the lead up by three. It's their first lead since back in the first quarter. It's a full timeout, and we'll see right here. Let's take a look at some of the overall stats. That last three-pointer for the Mountain Lions put them in an even 50% for the game. And especially when you're missing some of these inside shots, the three-pointers falling for the Mountain Lions, able to knock down some 
big time triples. Jesse Iweezy, three of four. Max Stoddard, two of four from downtown. Rebounding in favor of the Mountain Lions at the moment. I don't feel like either team is shooting all that poorly, so there haven't been like a ton of rebounding opportunities for either side. But they've done a good job of keeping each other off the offensive boards. Not a lot of easy putbacks. There's only three offensive rebounds for each team. And overall, Mountain Lions doing a lot of good things. And just wish they'd hit a couple more free throws. I think they were 11 of 21 yesterday for free throws as well. So obviously something that Jeff Culver needs to spend a little bit more time on in practice is from the charity strike. Absolutely. And the team draws a lot of fouls. You can see there they had already shot 13 free throws here in this one. Not any real foul trouble. A couple players with two, as well as Deegan Williams with three, but Mountain Lions struggling from the stripe. Seven on the shot clock. Turn around, long Jay is short, and Jesse with the board. Hannes Saar, who's been quiet, can't get that turnaround to fall. He and I Weezy battle each other and unfortunately push it off to Black Hills. Ragsdale, step back, money. Such a smooth shot from Matthew Ragsdale. Goes right over the top of Jesse McKenzie on the step back. It's a pro move right there. Kyle Cabs, tough take, got his own rebound and then he tipped it out of bounds. Yep. As I mentioned earlier, the game last night was 40, 41 at halftime. As we get to about the 10 and a half minute mark, we are just nearing that score. So a little bit lower scoring of a game tonight. Ragsdale left open in the corner and he's not gonna miss many of those as Black Hills retakes the lead. First yellow jacket in double digits is Ragsdale. There's a couple players that have eight and seven. Jezza behind a screen from Cavs, kicks it over to Martinez. Faked one way, went the other one, floater in the lane. Man, just a little bit too much. Had the lane, just couldn't finish. And then beating everybody down the court for the layup is Fisher. Martinez did so well to get to a dangerous spot and just, just a little bit too much. Mount Lions have had some great shots. Kick out, Star. Nope, Han S has just been off today. And Cavs is gonna pick up a foul on Hearn as Kyle had the rebound and Hearn came in very late. Max Stoddard checks back in on a double-double watch as well. Ten points for the big man along with nine rebounds. Iweezy isolated on Shanklin. Gets it to fall and one. Jesse Iweezy, the bucket in the bump ties it up. Sorry, we're still two points short. They got the score up there before I was ready. So Iweezy with a chance at a three-point play. Take another look at it. Down low, had Shanklin bodying him up, got around him, and finished nicely. 
Iweezy, that basket actually gives him a new career high, 16 points. As he missed the free throw. New career high in minutes as well. So Jesse Iweezy taking advantage of the playing time. Got to be happy if you're Jeff Culver with that. And Ragsdale is out of bounds. Jesse Iweezy coming into the game averaged about 10 points. That's good enough for third best on the team. And putting up a new career best tonight. His efforts have been fantastic. Efficient night as well, six of eight from the field, three of four from three-point land. McKenzie lets go of a triple, left it short. Oh, and nice hands from Baca. Noah thought he poked it away cleanly, and the official called the late foul. Noah Baca had a lot of minutes last night. Hasn't played as much here in this one. Just about 10 minutes to his name. Oh, Soddard was in the passing lane, but couldn't catch the bullet pass as the Mountain Lions working hard, and Shanklin just too strong down low, and that puts him in double figures now with 10. Smart move to double on Ragsdale. He's been the most electric scorer for this Yellow Jacket team with 10 points. A couple of threes as well. Like that idea. Baca. Used the rim to perfection on that one. Just kind of snuck it onto the side of the rim from a tough angle. Now Baca guarding his former high school teammate Ragsdale is switched off on the screen. And there is the double-double for Max Stoddard with that rebound. That brings us to the under eight media. Keeping it close, Black Hills still holds a two point lead.
Cards with possession down just two. They tried to get into Iweezy and overthrew him on the inbound. And that's tough to do. <laughs> yeah, offensive foul call, lowering his shoulder with Speckman to try and clear some space, and Iweezy held his ground perfectly. Iweezy got his hands on the drive, able to knock it away. Unfortunately, it fell right to Joel Speckman, the freshman, with the offensive foul going the other way now. That's the fourth on Speckman. Stoddard likes the look and re-gives the Math Lions the lead for the first time since it was 40 to 39. Both of the big men for the Mountain Lions knocking down three three-pointers. An impressive, impressive mark for the two big men. Good job by Sauter to come over and help on Ragsdale, but just too good there for Matthew. Ragsdale plays almost 10 minutes more than the next teammate in this one. And Jezza just unlucky, still yet to score here. Oh no, he does have a point on a free throw, but no field goals. Speckman lowered his shoulder again, and Stoddard again doing a good job. Great body there from Stoddard, not to foul. There we go. Iweezy got his hands on it. Couldn't alter the shot enough as Hearn pushes Black Hills advantage back out to three. Neither team with a really clear advantage in the shooting categories. Iweezy off the mark on that one. You know, the Mountain Lions have played, this is their fourth game here inside the Galilee Event Center this year. The first three games all decided by five points or less. And it looks like <laughs> this one may end up in that same category if things continue. Three ball, good. Tate. Absolutely, Ronnie L. Tate knocks down the three to push it to six points, but certainly has the looks of a, another tight Armac matchup. Baca, Noah Baca off the mark. Mountain Lions shooting better from beyond the three-point arc than from the field as Baca will get called for the foul. UCCS scoreless again for nearly two minutes. They're, that's been the issue, I feel like. They've gone these long stretches without being able to put the ball in the basket. And it's not like it's been bad shots from anyone. You know, there's been a few off balance, but there's been a lot of great rhythm shots that just haven't fallen for the home team. And now they're shooting less than 40%, which they were shooting much better, yeah, and there's gonna be an offensive foul there, the push off by Williams. That's his fourth foul also. Cabs will check in for Jesse Iweezy as we are under the four and a half minute mark. Mount Lions still down six late in this one. Baca thought Cavs wanted the ball and he threw it away. And a dunk on the other end by Tate. Ron Ale with the throwdown. Came into this game fifth in points on his team. As Martinez knocks that one down. Good shot from the elbow there by the freshman. And Mount Lions within six, so a two possession game here. Hopefully they don't let it get out of hand. Ragsdale too tough on that turnaround. Ragsdale up to 14 points for the visitors. Star will get a chance to head to the free throw line. Han S has not had a great game either. That actually brings us to the final media timeout of the game, 3.28 to go. Black Hills stayed their largest lead of the contest, currently up by eight.
So Hannes Saar, still looking for his first points in the ball game, will have a couple of free throws. And he got that one to fall. Maybe that'll get him off the snide from the field as Saar came in the second leading scorer on the team, averaging 10 and a half a game. And he knocks down both of them. Sometimes that's all it takes for a player to kind of break that shooting woes, so to say. Hopefully it will for Hanesar. Ragsdale got it into the corner. Wow. Good take and finish with the left hand by Fisher. Fisher the fourth. Yellow Jacket into double digits in the scoring margin. As you mentioned in the break, as Mountain Lions turn it over here, a lot of points from a few players on the Mountain Lion side. And Cavs is going to pick up a personal. Iweezy and McKenzie checking back in for UCCS. as Black Hills will take the ball out right in front of their bench. Two thirty-five to go in the game. Black Hills gonna milk the shot clock as much as possible their last couple of possessions. They get it to Ragsdale in the corner, off the mark. Jezza comes down with it. Quickly up to Xavier. Pointing Iweezy to where he wants him to go. Gets it over to Saar, had that shot blocked. It's poked out, Ragsdale ran it down. Hearn leaked out, wanted the pass up, but Yellow Jacket's content to just run a little more shot clock and game clock here. I would be surprised to see Black Hills take a shot before there's like Less than 10 seconds on the shot clock moving forward. That foul is going to go on Saar. Mount Lions have the benefit of only five second half team fouls. So still a waste, a little bit to go at least for free throws. But with two minutes, Mount Lions need to get on a run here. And again, scoreless for nearly two minutes is UCCS. And that's gonna stay with Black Hills, but there's only, oh, it was a foul called, sorry. It's gonna go against Iweezy, his third. Thought well, maybe Tape put it off his own foot, but. And then they're going to get tape for a foul on the inbound as he kind of put his arms up around the neck of Saar and Hannes hit the deck. Saar behind the back into the lane, kick out Mac. No good. Into the corner. And it's going to go out of bounds back to the Yellow Jackets. Just 83 seconds remain in this game, and UCCS is going to call a timeout. And it's only a 30, so we'll stay right here as the Mountain Lions are going to have to figure out something to solve the issue of putting the ball in the basket as you take a look at some of those stats and unfortunately they've slowly gotten a little bit worse as the game has progressed. Yeah, you see the field goal percentage and three point percentage. Normally three point percentage at 37 would be great, but the field goals just have not been falling for the home team where Black Hills State has just kind of gotten better over time. 
Mountain Lions on pace for their lowest scoring output in a game. Their lowest currently has been 64 points. Right now sitting at just 51 with just under a minute and a half to go. Last time these two teams played, it was a high scoring affair, at least one-sidedly. Black Hill State took that one in the 2022 season. Tried to find Ragsdale. <laughs> And it just ended up in the hands of Shanklin, and when things go right, I guess they just go really right. When it rains, it pours, and that was just kind of a bad break for the Mountain Lions who needed a good one. First double-digit lead of the game for Black Hills is then cut instantly to seven as Martinez hits a three. Mountain Lions up top, pressuring, need to get a turnover here. And the cheap foul there as Martinez runs into the back of Ragsdale. And Ragsdale will go to the free throw line as that puts UCCS at the first bonus level. So Ragsdale will have a one and one. Ragsdale with five first half points kind of come alive here in the second half with nine points and a pair of threes. And so smooth from Matthew Ragsdale. Two and two, the lead is still at nine. See Big Mac Stoddard ready to bring the ball in. 50 seconds to go. He'll roll it up for Martinez, who picks it up at the S of the logo. Gonna have to get a shot off quickly. Wow, sweet move from Xavier, couldn't finish. And they're gonna call a goaltending on Black Hills. Even though he didn't touch the ball, he slapped the backboard and I think, I'm pretty sure that's the action that will get the two points. Now, now the officials are gonna look at it. Two officials blew their whistles at the exact same time and made the goaltending call, but now they're gonna talk about it. I saw a lot of this last night as well in the game against South Dakota Mines, or a game flow just kind of thrown off a little bit by calls. I think we had four, was it four or five technical fouls in that game? Just kind of slowed the pace as we'll take a look at yeah, he didn't replay. actually hit the ball, but when you slap the backboard like that and make it move, I'm, I think it's an instant. I don't think he actually has to touch the ball in that case, I think. Don't quote me on it, because I need to reread the rule book, but. Either way, Mountain Lions in a little bit of trouble here, a big time bucket. Could potentially put them within five, make it a two score game should this one count. Looks like our referee's still struggling to kind of decide on the call there. As Ron L. Tape almost affected that shot. Not sure once again if he was able to get the ball or if he hit the backboard or something else, but an extended look at this one from our officials this evening. Got to make sure they get it right. Seven point deficit in 43 seconds, certainly not insurmountable. So this could be a big play if they give the Mountain Lions a couple of points. Players anxiously waiting this one. And they will call the goaltending. So basket will count. And for Martinez, that's now game high 17 points. 
Full court press coming from UCCS. Cavs will be the point of the diamond. And Black Hills doing a great job with the ball movement. That's how you break a press and break it quickly is Chris passes, and that's exactly what they did, able to kill about six seconds off the clock. Mountain Lions tried to double quickly onto Ragsdale, forced the good free throw shooter to pass it or turn it over, but Ragsdale able to find a pass, found its way up court. One and one falls in. Mackenzie, just not his day. Jezza is going to be unhappy on this birthday of his, his 22nd. It has not been the best evening for Jezza, unfortunately. We do have to wish him a happy birthday, though, at some point. So with 29 seconds left in the game, we'll do that. Happy birthday to Jezza McKenzie. And Hopefully the Mountain Lions will be able to figure something out and practice next week as they hit the road and have a tough, tough matchup next week as they will visit Colorado Mesa and Westminster. The Mavericks, one of the preseason favorites in the RMAC and off to a five and one start on the season. That trip to Salt Lake City to take on Westminster, never an easy one as that's a long bus ride to get out there to Salt Lake, so. Mount Lions will continue RMAC play next Friday and Saturday as you take a look at UCCS head coach Jeff Culver. He and his staff will need to figure out what they're going to do moving forward. Four game away stretch for the Mount Lions before the holiday break. Certainly need to rethink things tonight. Yeah, the Mountain Lions aren't back home until after the new year on January 6th when they will host Western Colorado. And then the next week, the 12th and the 13th, they will host Fort Lewis and Adams State. So the Mountain Lions drop a 67-56 decision to Black Hill State University. They fall to four and four on the season, two and two in RMAC play, and like we said, they will hit the road next week to visit Colorado Mesa and Westminster. Brian, some final thoughts on this one. Yeah, especially after last night's game, Mount Lions started off so hot. Jesse Iweezy, a career night, 16 points, six of nine from the field, three of five from downtown, and Max Stoddard able to pour in alongside Xavier Martinez, but despite the best efforts from three of the UCCS top scorers, Mountain Lions unable to pick up a win here in RMAC play, dropped to 0-2. Yeah, 46 of the 56 points came from Xavier Martinez, Jesse Iweezy, and Max Stoddard, and so not a whole lot of help for those three this evening as the Mountain Lions drop this game. That's gonna do it for us, for everyone at UCCS. For my partner, Brian Geenan, I'm Jason Carter. Thanks so much for hanging out. Hope you all have a wonderful holiday break, and we'll see you back here for the next home games after the new year on January 6th. Have a great holiday season, everybody.